and this I'll tell you this honestly. If, if, if I like I had it last night in we played LA last night. I'm playing the drums up there and I'm for a second like am I having it today? Like am I really nailing stuff today? And I see a dude out there going like this. And I'm like, oh cool, I fucking got it. Hannes, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, you are, as always, crazy busy. You are in Vegas right now. You're on tour with Priest, obviously. Uh, how are you doing? Are, is there any in the crazy, insanely machine that is Sabaton on tour? Is there any time for you to take a break and, and just have some fun in Vegas as well? Um, yes, actually. I mean... First off, we are the support band on this tour, so we do play only one hour every night. So that gives us a lot of time to uh, to actually hang out. You know, that's the difference of supporting and mm -hmm. headlining a show. We actually do have a lot of time, and then what you do with it is it's up to you. You know, but yeah, 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 uh, yeah man, it's been good. I mean. Technically, we're done at 7.30, 8.30 kind of thing. If you want to, you could go out and have a meal afterwards, which is like such a luxurious problem to have. Um, so no, actually, the tempo is, is quite quite okay. And uh, yeah, yeah. You know, did you ever think that at one point in your career, you'd be doing press to promote a concert movie that in North America alone is shown in over 500 cinemas. Um, that I don't think was on your expectations list uh, when you were a little younger. It was not on my expectation list uh, six months ago either. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to have to have like to, to, to start off from the beginning, like, of course, we it's a it's a long process before filming something like that like mm -hmm. just technically what do we want what do we, what do we expect who do we want to direct it so we work with jens the boss which has been with us for many years now uh and he knows what we want we know what he can do and we also trust him in the process of you know i think it's important as any type of creative person you have to let them do their thing for it to become a good result in the end. If it's a t tattoo artist or a musician, you know, there has to be a, a bit of them in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we trusted him with the process and and it turned out, this was one of those nights where I think we all came off stage and like, man, I'm so happy that that was, that was such a good night and we captured it and now let's see if we actually did capture it, not only recorded right. it, right? That's yeah, yeah, yeah. not the same thing. And then we started the post process and the longer it went, the happier we became. So, okay, then what are we going to do with it now? How do you see it, a heavy metal show in the best way possible not being there? Can we do cinema? Maybe. What, what, right, big screen, we can mix it in Dolby Atmos, freaking awesome mix. And from there, it kind of took off, you know. And mm -hmm. we, the funny thing with this project is that we worked with a small independent company in Sweden that usually does like um, indie, Swedish indie movies, right? So, Folketus or Parker is the name of that. Yeah. And they work together with our booking agency, All Things Live. And they went cinema to cinema, country to country, and they put in some hard work into that and here we are i think it's 1500 cinemas or almost more in the end you know how like it's even elevated on a tank uh you know drummers don't get to see a whole lot necessarily of a show uh there's a lot in your way if you will so how how weird is it for you to watch such a product not just come to life the process that you're just talking about but just any kind of actual recording because the other guys they're out there they see the crowd better than you can um right for you how weird is that 
I wouldn't say it's weird. I've, we've done it so many times now. So, but right. I was so involved in the whole process, and this is such a fucking boring answer. But so, what you do basically is like it's mixing an album. You're looking for mistakes. That's what you do. Yeah. Ultimately, like you're you're so you're so kind of in it, and you know, I mean. It, remove this let's change this out let's get seen to that I'm, I'm missing that so you get kind of a little bit burned out on it so i always make sure i take a long break if when it's done i don't look at it and then i kind of try and really try to enjoy it mm -hmm. a few weeks or months later if i'm lucky so yeah 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 but it is cool because i don't really get to see much cause i'm very far away yeah yeah, yeah. and you have a light in your face. It's quite epileptic sometimes. <laughs> um, well, and, and your own cameras as well, obviously, for all your drum cam stuff. Um, yeah. You said, you know, I go, you know, as a producer, like all I do is look for the mistakes. And that sparks, um, this must have been 2017 or so, I think that you did um, an interview. I, I don't know if it was on behalf of Yamaha, maybe it was, but you were talking about, you know, you know, your journey as a drummer and you're taught and you're saying mm -hmm. that, you know, you're such a big believer in like practicing and learning and learning, but that then in 2017, maybe, you know, nowadays you're too busy really to get a lot of practice in. Um, now you <laughs> with a whole family and Sabaton being bigger every year. When's the last time you got to practice? Right. It's funny. You would ask that. I literally saw this video like, a few days ago okay and i remember saying that and i don't know actually why i said that it was such a funny <laughs> thing to say because it is not true it wasn't true back then I, I think frankly i was quite nervous doing that like we were in this huge super famous studio in hamburg uh i i, I guess my point was more i wish i could practice more Right. And uh, at some point, I knew that would come back and haunt me because, like, I actually do really enjoy practice. I, I mm -hmm. do practice. I, I, I like playing things that I'm not particularly very good at. And I guess that is ultimately practicing. Like, I like to, you know, for sound check, uh, throw in a song where I'm a bit uncomfortable, like, musically. Like, I know I'm out there because I, I know how much that will help you to grow musically. So, man, I do practice. I just do it maybe a bit differently than I used to do, where you could technically or yeah, just yeah. sit six every day, right? I don't do that anymore. But, I mean, I do sit on my... I have a warm-up kit here. We do mm -hmm. play. And I'm, Toby's back in the band, too. You know, old, old new guys back. And we need to get him in, rotating in on on a lot of songs which is yeah. great for us too it keeps us sharp right on, on our toes yeah, yeah, yeah. on the concept of like practicing and developing new skills and stuff um so a good friend of mine is uh current is the bass player in accept uh martin motnik um and he'll joke you know like being part of the the rhythm section of heavy metal and power metal compared to some other more uh, specific sub 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 genres of metal um who sometimes say like ah oh, you know heavy metal power metal it's simple it's the same old same old and, he, and he'll joke like on my bass guitar i have the upper register and i have the cash register that people want me to play for songs and he, and he pushes to get a little bit more adventurous bass playing into accepts new sound what's your perspective as a drummer uh the other part of the rhythm section like do people massively underestimate the in intricacies of power metal oh, oh okay that's a good question like for one i don't think we play power metal i think we play heavy metal because okay. if you think of it what makes it power power metal it's like usually high pitched vocals and very fast songs about dragons or some stuff like that you can, sw don't you can swear any. don't worry about it you can swear <laughs> <laughs> uh, we don't have any of that like we have no dragons we don't have any high pitched stuff and sure, we have fast stuff, but the majority isn't. So I would yeah, say yeah. it leans way more heavy on on classic metal and 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 heavy metal. 
So, uh, and what was the question again? Uh, if 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 drum playing in heavy metal and power metal, if that right. is usually underrated, and maybe as a side right. note, by the way, maybe Sabaton has also changed the definition of what power metal is. Because if you ask people now, who is the biggest power metal band? Everybody's gonna say Sabaton. No longer Halloween. Right. Oh wow, that's interesting. I, I didn't know that actually, but uh, well, yeah, I don't know. I, I, for me, I, I mean, I, I, I come from. I I used to play so many different types of music. I, I never kind of squared myself into where I grew up. It was there was a lot of death metal, like mm -hmm. thrash and death. That's Sweden, right? Everything is dark and cold, so everybody gets grim and. We got to play the fastest stuff. And I used to do that a lot. Like, we would play F. Gates cover. We played, uh, yeah, I mean, Testament. We played a lot of their stuff, especially the mm -hmm. early things. Or we went into thrash from there to... Uh, but I also played a lot of fun. I also played a lot of... Uh, I played in pop projects. I did... Yeah, so for me, it's, I, 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 I always like to play pretty much anything. Like, I don't really care. Like, I, I, I love playing drums. And if you put me in, a, well, jazz, I didn't do that. But fuck yeah, dude, I'll, I'll do it. Like, if I, if I enjoy it, I'm going to play it. And, and for me, and this, I'll tell you this honestly. If, if I, like, I had it last night and we played LA last night. I'm playing the drums up there. And I'm, for a second, like, Am I having it today? Like, am I really nailing stuff today? And I see a dude out there going like this. And I'm like, oh, cool. I fucking got it, right? Like, if yeah, people yeah. are unconsciously, uh, what do you say? Like, grooving to the beat or whatever, like, jamming out. That is, for me, one of the boxes for me to check. Like, mm -hmm. it's in the end, it's all about the groove for me. Even if you play uh, death metal or you play pop music or uh, whatever, right? Like Pantera, fucking, they were a brutal band musically, but they always had a groove. Like, it's such a great example of the groove is, I think, is just in our system. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. That, that's great. Like, yeah, no. Are there then. Because you said like, oh, we don't have songs about dragons. I think there's at least one or two in the very, very old stuff of Sabaton that uh, I know. I, I know there's Ring Rave songs. I know that Ring stuff and yep. shit like that. But um, uh, I know your I know your stuff, dude. Yeah, you're right. I think there's some Lord of the Ring stuff in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before, before yeah, yeah. it was a, a little bit more specific theme. Um, from the old school stuff, um, uh, like like from a groovy perspective, I think an un a song that. A Sabaton song that is impossible to head, impossible not to headbang to, I think has right. to be the Rise of Evil, maybe. Um, okay. But um, uh, from the from the old stuff that that was yeah. recorded before you joined, are there yeah. things that you go like, you know, what that's a bit of a gem that I could add some Hannah's groove to that I'd love for us to revisit. Always. I think it's always like that, but but here's the, the the tricky thing, and I've done this before, coming in after another drummer. I mean, Daniel is a good friend of mine, uh, and he recorded those things back then for a reason. Mm -hmm. So I have to play it with respect and remember why it was recorded like that, and also like even if it was another era, like now we're talking twenty years ago. That's the way it sounded back then. And I, right. I don't think we're coming to change stuff. I don't think I wouldn't like that. Like if there's some new dude coming in, changing, uh, yeah, whatever, the, 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 the drum beat to metal heart by accept. Yeah, yeah. Like, and you, you know, Chris doesn't do that. So he fucking kicks ass. So it's the same <laughs> for me. <laughs> but of course I'll add my, my own things just to be comfortable playing. Is um the fact that both of you, both you and Floyd, are in bands that are that have become more than bands that um, 
that are that are machines that are companies li quite literally uh are, are companies that have that grow and and uh, as you're touring obviously and stuff like that the fact that you both go through that similar um experience is is that an is that a necessity like if if one of you was in that world and the other wasn't would that have been a, an even bigger challenge than both being in that world a hypothetical question hard to know i guess it depends right. on the person does it help yes I, I really think so i think for an understanding of the other person i really think it, it, yeah. it, uh, it helps a lot you know you know what it's like you know how the days are you know the the ups and downs that you can have on tour the fatigue you can get the highs and the lows and all of it right it's uh no, no, I would, I would definitely say so. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you're, you're, you're hopefully experiencing a lot of highs right now on this tour. Um, it made it sound like it's nice to, to, to not headline, but I think it might be the last time you get that privilege uh, in North America because we can clearly see how European metal, regard specifically classic heavy metal and power metal, and what have you, that they have grown in popularity here significantly, right? I mean, we obviously had you guys come here a few times now. Uh, Power Wolf just did a run of arena shows as well. Uh, we see more and more of that. Um, so what can we, you know, Sabaton is, is, has become a band that will never have a break because if there's not a live show happening, we have a concert movie or both at the same time, there's always an EP or an album or a live album coming out. Um, for your North, the continuation of your North American domination, if you will, what can we keep our fingers crossed for for 2025? I would say for now, we, we are really focused on the release of the Tour Channel Tours, the movie. That's been our main focus. It's been such a long, great process. And I mean, feedback is coming in now. And I, and I love feedback. Like, I love all kinds of feedback. I think it's so cool to hear people's honest opinion. Uh, it was a, a night for us with freaking 16,000 of our closest Dutch friends and then some, obviously. Uh, I am super proud of it. I am proud of everybody involved. And I really mean that from, from the crew to the out the recording. Everybody was really on the top of their toes that night. And I think you really can tell. And also, like, I hope I'll watch this in a in a couple of years and remember that tour because it is the tour that we can capture. The whole tour was like that. Like we didn't mm -hmm. do anything extra for the filming. The whole that's what you see. It's it's really the tour capture. So that's that. And then we are here with Judas Priest supporting them on the Invisible Shield tour part two. And that is enough for us to focus on at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, maybe maybe some well deserved rest for you after this. But I have a feeling <laughs> you won't be able to enjoy that rest for too long. Um, well, I don't think any of us wants too much rest. We love <laughs> this stuff, you know, and it's very, yeah, it's the best ever. I will rest for a bit and then we're, we're back to it. This is yeah, what we yeah. do. And I think this is what, what everybody loves. So, yeah, man, it's, it's only good things. And, uh, to be able to release something like this and yeah man i'm super super happy about it Hannes, i hope that no more fire alarms go off for you tonight that the show will go on smooth that you win or lose the right amount of money you want uh, at slot machines or blackjack i don't, I don't do know that, dude. you <laughs> cannot let the drummer lose in a casino that's a no-go i won't <laughs> fucking do it but i will go out and have lunch with our fellow sweets in dark funeral now so that i'm gonna do there you go there you go well uh they uh, they were just here as well and they released a beer here that was fantastic i hope they brought some uh, of that beer for you guys to enjoy if not we'll save some for next time you come to toronto um I appreciate it. fantastic hannah thank you so much for your time today uh sorry you had to no jump much, through some man. hoops to uh to stay safe no with fire worries. alarms i really appreciate it have a fantastic show and we'll see you very soon either here in toronto or at the festivals in europe i hope so dude i appreciate it thank you so much You 
you are awesome for watching this video. Click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel.